Sustainability and inclusivity are words which every brand nowadays loves to incorporate, whether it is in their communication or even in this product. But I have a brand here today whose very genesis lies in inclusivity. And I'm very happy to have with me Udita Bansal. She's the founder of True Brows. Udita, welcome to Prish Brand Talk. Thank you, Simran. Thank you for inviting. Uh, very excited for this chat. Uh, Udita, I just want to take a step back in your journey and, uh, you know, you start how you started your entrepreneurial journey. What inspired you to create an urban ethnic fashion brand, True Browns? And how has the brand vision evolved since the, since the brand's inception? So, um, True Browns act started from a pure customer need and that customer's, customer was me, myself where I wanted, I'm, I was moving towards uh, wanting to wear um, ethnic, um, embrace ethnicity, but in a more contemporary way and um, could not find go-to brands uh, for uh, uh, the product that I was looking for. And so it stemmed from there and supported by uh, market validation on the market size, on where uh, the industry was moving, where the consumer trend was moving. Um, conceptualized true brown so this is back in 2016 when i started doing product market fit and there at that point of time there was a and even today right there was this uh uh going back to the roots uh uh thing uh with consumers ayurveda yoga uh embracing ethnicity was was beginning to rise uh post covid post pandemic it is it is all the more at its peak so um uh market clearly was moving towards uh, ethnicity uh, in India and um, my product uh, market validation for about two years like we went live on few platforms to test our product in pricing and quality um, uh, gave us the confidence to incorporate in 2019 um, when we started our own brand website and we went all out in terms of marketing um, and going live with a lot of other marketplaces so uh, that has been the start um, and from the very beginning, we have been an inclusive brand. Um, in fact, when we were testing our product, uh, we were offering from uh, till up to 10 XL. So uh, that was the ready uh, size, uh, ready garments that we were providing. And why in inclusive again? A, wanted to build a brand out of um, just as isness of life. So, um, and when that, and when it trickles down to the product, basically we are saying we all, all shapes, sizes, everyone is included right so from there the inclusivity started um initially it was still about 10xl and then in fact that's the change that happened till about 2019 where from 10xl we moved to about 6xl in terms of our offering um when we incorporated the company um uh, but yes um truly believe um uh, in uh, the in, in being inclusive as a brand our vision initially was um, in fact, actually, from the very beginning, uh, our vision has been to be a global brand. Uh, I remember when I was uh, uh, setting the Facebook uh, page name, I set it as True Browns Global uh, because it was it it was very clear that we build the brand, uh, we get bigger in India, and eventually we should go international. Our jo international journey started last year. I can come to that later, but. Uh, the vision has been to be a global urban ethnic brand from India, and we are on that journey. I want to come back to inclusivity and the international plans a little later, but how do you look back at the challenges and how did you overcome them in the initial phase? See, I mean, all founders go through challenges. Uh, it's part and parcel of building uh, something. But uh, I think... Um, uh, uh, one thing that uh, a I was very clear as to what I wanted to build. So holding very tight to uh, build the right product was something that uh, uh, helped us in establishing um, what True Browns was all about. So in the initial time, we were not doing a lot of brand marketing. Uh, our only um, marketing was our product. And one thing which actually worked in the initial years was 
after two years, three years, people started looking at the product and saying, oh, this, is, this, is this from True Browns? And that, were, that was a huge uh, uh, win for us. So uh, I think consistency of product helped us um, move, helped us take a step further in the market of apparel, right? Um, so that challenge of how do you differentiate uh, yourself from a product that started coming out very, very clearly. That's one. Second, um, you know, more at a personal level, just head on, just uh, keep building, keep building, keep building. Of course, there are a lot of challenges, setbacks, but um, uh, keep improvising in terms of whatever consumers are saying, uh, what the data is saying, helped us uh, move forward uh, in this journey. Uh, you know, Udita, when I look at the larger market over the last two years, there is clearly two different uh, types of brands for particularly for women. One is you've had uh, the regular brands wherein you offer sizes from say X S to you know double XL or triple XL, and then for uh, you know for other women who are larger, the, you know you have your uh, that's where you go for your plus size brands. But your one brand which you know right from the start you've in you've incorporated this inclusivity where everyone can shop. This, uh, you know, if someone is wearing an XS, you the same person can get it, say, at even a uh, 6XL. So, how did this positioning help build brand salience? And is this still a continuing brand uh, differentiator for this, for you? It was definitely a different differentiator in the beginning, uh, Simran. Um, two things uh, from a data perspective, like about 20, 22% of our sales were coming from the extreme sizes. So that was a very clear indication that the market uh, is very, very big. Um, and we had a lot of customer feedback on saying that we don't get great garments uh, readily available in the market at uh, these sizes. So we, 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 we just went deep dived into uh, doing this uh, more honestly, uh, looking at our design language, looking at uh, what we are doing for the big, uh, for the bigger sizes. Uh, initially, in the initial days, uh, we, in fact, our only uh, uh, one of the biggest differentiator was that we were a size inclusive brand, and that is that is that became the marketing uh, point at marketplaces wherever we went, basically, and that led to being uh, uh, being our big uh, biggest differentiator in the industry. Um, Today, there, there are other brands that have come up uh, who are providing uh, uh, the extreme sizes. Having said that, this still remains a good differentiator for the brand. But is this the only differentiator that we are building as a brand? No, we have, of course, evolved where we are saying, okay, we are a brand uh, built out of consciousness. This is what we stand for. This is the woman that we are catering to. This is the product that we are doing. So in the larger scheme of things, as our journey progressed, our um, offering, our uh, standpoint has also evolved. So inclusivity uh, is not the only point for us now. Having said that, this has become a hygiene for us. You know, when you you started as a digital D two C D two C brand, and at that point of times, you don't have that much of money also for marketing. So you know, what, can you just share some of the insights and learnings that you had? You know, because you leveraged a lot of e commerce retail marketing. So anything that you can share with us, like how this helped your brand grow? Sure. Simran, we, I, would, I would say we were a digital brand. Um, we started website full-fledgedly in terms of a lot of performance marketing spent slightly later. Initially, we were very, very aggressive on marketplaces because you rightly said uh, there's a lot of money needed for performance marketing. And that was a challenge with us as well. So we went very aggressive with marketplaces and we went all out. I remember I we, I was listing everywhere from very big platforms to small platforms. Uh, and the reason was this because we wanted to understand where our consumer is, uh, what are they saying. Um, um, uh, uh, we also wanted to test which platform is actually uh, doing well for us, right? So this, you know, the one, and this is, this is one thing I would tell everyone today that today the marketplace, um, is so um, well settled in term, and it is such a, a good platform for brands to test that go live on marketplaces and that actually helps to test your product. And this is what we did. The good part of that was on smaller plat marketplace, we did well everywhere, but on small, smaller marketplaces, we became the biggest, uh, one of the biggest uh, brands and that got us a lot of 
uh, marketing on its own. You know, the marketing that you're talking about. So the marketing actually started for the brand from marketplaces where uh, a good product got us good sales. That got us the marketplace pushing the brand a lot in their marketing and hence the visibility of the brand uh, overall uh, saw a jump. Uh, a lot of visibility we got from marketplaces. So that is the true, uh, I would say, uh, marketing uh, that we did in the beginning. Post that, after about two and a half years, we started, um, I mean, we started our website, but we started small in terms of performance marketing spend. We, we used to be very, very careful in terms of what RAS we are getting, um, our conversions and everything, even today, of course. But slowly that journey began uh, in terms of uh, doing the performance marketing spend for D2C. We're talking about going cookie less. So any, you know, you can share how you're leveraging your data and technology to kind of optimize how you reach your customer because you do have data, whether it's from the marketplace or also from your microsite. So how is it helping you to better target your customer? We are using data very, very extensively. And now we have a lot of data from our own website as well. Uh, I think uh, one of the biggest uh, um, actionable and uh, points that for us is that uh, and maybe a lot of brands are doing this today. Um, reach out to the customer on the channel they are uh, easiest to convert. So whether uh, whether it is going to be WhatsApp, whether it's going to be an emailer, or whether it's going to be uh, sending other uh, form of communication to a uh, to a customer. So using data to basically make customer cohorts and reach out, reach to them uh, on the channel at a particular time of the day in a particular kind of content format that they will um, engage with the brand, come to our website uh, and spend some time there. So uh, that is one of the one of the key points of using data. Secondly, uh, we trickle down, we use data in terms of um, having analysis for our sizes as well. Considering we are up to 6X, 6XL, there is a lot of need to look at what consumers are saying and where which product has what kind of feedback from the customer where do we have higher returns while returns what the customer is saying in terms of why did they return it what is the pattern in terms of silhouette to the returns to the size uh, where the returns are highest uh we've we've, we've in we are building uh an automation at our back end in the office where uh, in the company where all of this analysis will is going to become automated so this is we've we've used data till now in this uh, aspect but we're going to automate this part of uh data crunching uh you know from an online brand you've now become offline and also in, you've gone international so can you just talk about this because you're clearly very interna uh, you're very excited about the international part of it also so can you talk about it and your plans on scaling up Yes, uh, definitely. Yes, you're right. Very excited about uh, going international and scaling up there. We started international in, in Jan 23 and month on month it has, uh, it has maybe grown 100% or more than that. So we're very excited to build international market. US is our biggest market. Um, and um, there's a lot of potential that we see for the brand to grow internationally. In fact, we're going to build the international channel now as a separate business where we go all out in terms of building all channels um, for international doing uh, uh, international specific marketing, brand marketing and uh, channel marketing and uh, eventually maybe look at content uh, also uh, suitable only for international market. So this is this is the plan to grow uh, international. Uh, offline also very excited. Um, we uh, started our shop and shop uh, journey la last year. Today we, uh, we are with uh, Shopstop. Uh, we are with Iconic. We are with um, DLF. Uh, we have a, a pop up with DLF. Uh, with Nika offline, we are there. Uh, so our offline journey also has been extremely uh, positive. There is a great customer feedback. There is a great growth that we are seeing in offline. So from an uh, 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 from a vision perspective. Uh, it is to expand uh, now in our exclusive outlets. So uh, hopefully in the in this in the coming year we're going to have uh, stores. We've not signed anything yet, but yes, 
we are uh, very focused in terms of building our exclusive outlets and uh, expand our uh, current uh, SIS. Uh, you know, you also ventured into the jewelry space and also into the men's urban ethnic fashion space. So how has this panned out? Uh, so jewelry, we launched in April 23. Men's, we launched in October 23. All of this was last year. Uh, great response again. Uh, men's is doing better than jewelry. Um, uh, uh, way way better and um, we had more than what we had expected so we had expected that it would be like from that launch it would be 10 percent of the of that new launch uh, mm -hmm. in terms of contribution it's about 30 percent um great response domestic and on an international uh, uh channel so menswear is also some is something that we're going to build on jewelry is also as a category because eventually the vision of the brand is to become a lifestyle brand we will go deep into other categories as well and going to go, going to go deep into jewelry and launch other categories as well. And menswear, as an extension, uh, is giving us um, great confidence. So this is this that was the trial in October twenty three, but uh, clearly it's not not a trial, not just a trial anymore. We will uh, build our menswear as well. In addition to inclusivity, the other big USP is sustainability. Now, you know, unfortunately, the perception which comes to being a sustainable brand is expensive and the price points are higher. So what is your thoughts on that is, you know, so is sustainable brand is being sustainable with a higher price point? Is that sustainable or how how should, you know, how should brands probably look at this or how yeah. do you educate the customer? Yeah, yeah. So Simran, actually, you know, we don't call ourselves sustainable. We call ourselves conscious. And the reason is this. We want to be absolute honest with our customers. Uh, we are not 100% sustainable today because there are, of course, wastages happening. And as long as there are wastages happening, we will. But our intent is to be absolute uh, conscious about our how how we what are we making from our design language to how do we produce to how do we make that product reach the customer. So we call ourselves conscious. Uh, it's a journey. And um, it starts from a design language where we are saying we we make minimal uh minimal looking products and uh in great quality fabric uh from a from a perspective of that it's going to last longer in your wardrobe for many years and that automatically means that we are saying that we are uh saying no to overconsumption and that means lesser dump in the landfill so from our production processes where uh wastages are uh, aligned as much as possible. Um, the leftovers are used to make products like bandanas, stoles, uh, masks were made uh, during the pandemic to uh, the last mile delivery where our packaging is plastic free. Uh, we avoid using any kind of uh, uh, plastic uh, in our packaging. So everything is consciously done. Um, so we'll call ourselves a conscious brand and not a sustainable brand because the day we are 100% sustainable, we will call ourselves 100% sustainable. We we don't use polyester. Uh, we don't use uh, fabrics uh, 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 which are not good for the environment. Coming to your question that are sustainable products more expensive? Uh, from a, they are more, they are slightly uh, expensive because today, uh, I think brands should not call themselves sustainable till they don't till they don't have the certificate to call themselves sustainable. That is, I think, point one. Second, it's expen it's expensive because, uh, to a certain extent, but not to the point that it is not achievable and it customers will not appreciate it. So a lot of work has to happen in uh, educating the customers, making the customers uh, uh, understand, believe, accept uh, as to why they should pick a consciously made product the day that happens and it is that journey is going very well in india i believe uh, there is a clear shift in the way consumers want to use products today hence that difference of perception of whether it is expensive or not will start changing right uh, it's 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 a it's a it's a game of uh, accepting the why of why uh, uh, it's important to build on consciously made products so you just yeah. recently launched a new campaign. Can you tell us a little about it and the metrics you hope to achieve with it? Uh, Malang. Oh, yes. So, uh, 
we've in fact just launched about uh, i think not even 10 days back uh so too soon to speak about metrics but the overall feedback on the on the campaign on our launch is extremely extremely well um uh, consumers are loving uh, have you seen the campaign by any chance yes i did yes i, I did it's okay oh nice. wow oh wow wow so yes people uh, there's a great feedback uh, on the on the campaign on the storyline that we've built uh, with every campaign we try to b- bring the true browns woman uh, closer to our consumers as to who she is how is her lifestyle um, so it's doing extre- i mean the number of messages i've received after the campaign got launched gave me the confidence that it's done a good job on this from a just a small thing like too soon to say as i said it's just 10 days but um the usual traction that we see on a new launch we on this on this campaign we are seeing double the traction um uh, hoping that this will mature further and give us bigger uh, uh, returns and uh, more confidence to build this further but uh, to start with as in i think it's a great start on the on the launch i just have a couple of more questions firstly you know uh, what percentage of your revenue comes from uh, E- online versus uh, that is from the e-commerce market uh, places versus yeah. your micro uh, versus your own website sure. and if you could also just you know guide uh, tell me about uh, how you know how much of it is still being uh, primarily from women and you said mentioned the men's uh, segment has seen a huge traction you've seen over there as well as international so you could just make us understand a little bit about how things are placed at the moment so today our brand website is about 70 75% uh when we started as i said we were more marketplaces because we were very uh, you know uh, so that time marketplaces were about 80% uh, or more and the uh, website was very small today um our uh, own website is about uh, 75% and um international of this of the domestic of the own website business is about 25% so international is also very very uh, healthy for the brand um for uh, men's wear i think it's not going to be a great comparison because it was a trial that we did our uh, so the from an inventory of what was there in uh, what the offering that was there in women's wear versus men's wear there was a lot of difference so i think we'll hold on to that number in terms of what the men's wear contribution looks like for the brand we would let it mature evolve and then come to it but yes the initial traction uh, the initial response was three times of what we had actually planned um and a uh, vision is to keep our brand website uh, as our key channel uh, because we are not just se- we are not selling a product we're building a brand and we're building a story uh, we want consumers to you know connect with us on the why of true browns of who this woman is what is she wanting to do um, and how she leads her life be a part of that uh, then you know automatically love the product so brand website clearly because that uh, means a lot of brand marketing a lot of content a lot of um uh, storytelling uh, so brand website is going to be our uh, key channel and uh, yes we're going to trickle down into menswear uh, get into more categories build jewelry further that is what the, what our plans are for the coming year and finally uh, you know when we are ending the year, financial year so what's been the growth year on year that you've seen and what can we expect what is the target that you're looking at for the next year so um fi 20 um uh, uh 23 uh, we grew about three times uh of fi 22 this year we've grown about uh, two times uh of the previous year and uh, the next year we see about um, uh, growth of about 1 1.5 times um uh, so yeah that's the plan as of now but hoping we cross uh, we uh, overdo these numbers uh, thank you so much vidita for your time it was a lo- lovely talking to you and more power to true browns as you go ahead thank you so much sandan thank you so much lovely talking to you 